Well, good morning, everybody. It is May the 20th, 2015. I'm Cindy K. Courier, and it's another bright and sunny day here at Lake Norman in North Carolina. And I've had several of you write and say, hey, are you anywhere near Charlotte? Yeah, Lake Norman is just north of Charlotte, North Carolina. So if you want to come to our gathering May 29th, 2015, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., please write to Lake Norman Coffee Chat at AOL.com and you'll get directions. And come on, we've got some important stuff to discuss. We need to discuss natural law, how to proceed in natural law, uh, you know, all those little details. And so we can do that. This morning I had several things prepared in my mind to talk about when someone sent me a video that I had seen before but had forgotten about and uh, it was flagged as important. And so I want to bring you portions of that today. And um, years ago when I when I stopped my practice as a psychotherapist it was because I had ethical problems with what I was doing and I've shared a little bit about that with you already but one of the things that was happening is people were developing illnesses that doctors had no clue how to address and they were sending them to me these people were being you know written off as having um, psychosomatic symptoms or somatic symptoms or stress related symptoms and uh, sent to a therapist I saw this happening and I and I you know because I'm a little bit aware of what's going on in the world I understood it to be in large part part of the environmental contamination that goes along with Agenda 21 and the plan to depopulate the United States as well as other parts of the world and so that's one reason why I'm doing what I'm doing today. Um, and that's what this video is about. Well, there's an interesting article. 16-year Marine recon scout sniper resigns and walks out after receiving Jade Helmore's. We might be able to look at that later. Um, but for now, let's take a listen. This was uploaded by Ryan Coll. Uh, Conley, February 18th of 2014, I first saw a version of this video in 2000, or I'm sorry, yeah, in, in uh, 2013. So let's take a listen. Okay. So at this time, take the microphone away. We can go anywhere you want. All right. Well, I recently, a few days ago, uploaded a video entitled Urgent Classified Documentation Reveals Horrifying Government Plot. This was by Dr. Weld, Bill H. Weld. In the video, he describes classified documents from the CIA, Naval Intelligence, and the DOD that he has seen personally and has promised his source that he would not bring to the public most of those documents for two weeks after this original video went up to allow his source to finish his retirement and to leave the country because as soon as these documents are published, his source believes that if he were to stay in the country, he would be killed. Because at this point, they don't know who his source is. But once these documents are published, they could very well know who he is. Uh, but the information was too time sensitive. So he needed to get that video up, and I decided to go ahead and mirror it online and add some visuals uh, on my site so that people could hear what's coming down the, down the bend. Uh, the documents describe tiny microcellular sized killing machines called nanites because they have an outer coating that is robust and can handle going through the digestive system until they get to the right place to either burrow into human flesh or attach themselves to human flesh to go where they need to go. Um, they're different from the ones that we already know about in chemtrails. Chemtrail nanites we're familiar with, they burrow in the human flesh and they incessantly build polysilicon fibers for the sake of recreating men into cyborg-like creatures. 
And uh, they are a human experiment, just as in the Holocaust. And they were done on the general public without our knowledge or consent. Morgellons, as you may well know of, uh, which is a dreadful disease of terrible open sores and fibers coming out of the body that doctors refuse to give credence to is the result of these nanites that are poured down on us in chemtrails. Now, the nanites that he's talking about um, are made for one simple purpose, and they are to burrow into the bloodstream, gain entrance to the brain and other areas of the body in order to attach themselves to that tissue and lay in wait for classified military frequency signal to give them their working orders. At which time, they manipulate the brain and other areas of the body to send signals to those other areas of the body to affect what is called a cytokine storm. It's a sort of immune system feedback loop that is like your immune system on steroids. They cause the body's immune system to turn against itself and mimic virulent flu-like symptoms that develop into upper respiratory infection, fluid in the lungs, pneumonia, and eventually death. The target survival rate for the powers that be is 2%. Now they're saying that they want 99% of the populace infected with these things, and most of us are already. This program began in 1995. Now, I'm not saying they were sprayed or put into the, the water or the other uh, places where they're implemented in 1995, but that's when the program began. Um, he put up some documentation. Now, the two documents, I'll read them out to you. The cover page document says DTFN estimates for nano-domestic quell Phase 4 updated compliance, and this is for the Assistant Director of Advanced Projects, the Office of DARPA Command, for the Department of Secretary of Defense eyes only. Um, then it, it describes nano-domestic well in the other document, and it says that uh, there needs to be more inflows of dispersal in Pepsi Company, 9.9% more. Nestle, 8.5% more. It goes on with the different percentages. Chicago Municipal, that's referring to the water supply. Atlantic Municipal, another water supply. Coca-Cola, Los Angeles Municipal, and Seattle Municipal. These are just a few of the very many areas that uh, these things have infiltrated. Uh, to give you a little bit more of a heads up as to where these things are. Um, now, I have contacted my, my NASA contacts on this, and I have verification and confirmation from numerous sources. Um, NASA, my NASA contacts have confirmed this, that this is true, and when I ask them for uh, any kind of um, documentation that they could give me, they are not directly involved. He gave me the document, he said, this document has all, has it all. It tells you pretty much everything. And so he, he was saying, yes, it's true, it's real, it's in the water, it's in all these other products. Not only that, it's in vaccines. So these vaccines and so forth are laced with it. That's another interesting thing that we'll talk about. Well, literally, we have the science, am I correct, to make these little nano machines that can do uh, various tasks. Is that correct? Yes, and, and they're really, they're made to order. We can make them to order. You just go to, to the manufacturers and you say, look, I want a nanite that's this big. I want it to do this, 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 and this. I want it to not be susceptible to this. It has to go through this kind of environment. And you just go down the list of what you need and they will make it for you. Okay. Now, I needed more confirmation. She had some great documents she was showing and has some links at the bottom which have all been taken away. I checked all of these links and they've been taken down. So, I wanted 
know, more confirmation of what she was saying and I was able to uh, find this report it's a research study that's labeled as for peer review only so I'm not sure it was meant to actually be published but it's called the detection and characterization of engineered nanoparticles in food and the environment and it's a review and it starts out nanotechnology is a fast-growing market it is expected that increasingly more products will contain some sort of nanomaterial in the future. So far little is known about the occurrence, fate, and toxicity of nanoparticles. So, you know, this is a 110 page report. I don't remember how I ran across this. I, I was doing some kind of search. I was able to find it. Um, but when I read through this, I, I was pretty alarmed at how casually this is being you know, reported. You know, this is, you know, the proliferation of nanotechnology has prompted discussion over the safety of these materials to human health and environment. Discussion. Why are we discussing this? That that's my question. And uh, so I, I went to science.gov and entered food nanoparticles, and just as you can see, there's just uh, over 1,500 different articles on it. So, there's plenty there. There's plenty of evidence of what she's saying. So, what does this mean? We have been infected through food products and through bottled water uh, with these nanoparticles that are programmed to be enacted via Gwen Towers or, or other electromagnetic stimuli stimulus. So is there anything we can do about that? Um, you know, what do we do if we think we're infected? We are infected. Just assume that you are, especially if you live in America. And that's one of the reasons why I've been sharing with people. Let's see if I can get this guy's stuff to come up. About urine therapy accepting this liquid into our systems as we developed in our mother's amniotic fluid. Our present doctors in this new 21st century who operate on the embryo within the mother find that the surgical laser cuts made on the embryo during the operation cannot be found after birth. They reweb themselves and the skin is without scar. Can you now understand how it is so vitally important use urine on rashes, cuts, scrapes, scratches, as well as those who are with gangrene ready for amputation. There comes a period in each one of our lives where a special window of time will open for you. Many say we will have our 15 minutes of glory. This may be that time slot because in the next 15 minutes as you read on, you are about to find the most incredible information that will change your ways of life and the way that you were raised to think of society and our own body. You may take this information as not possible to endure, or you may take this information as legitimate and not foolish. But please reconsider centuries of usage. The poor as well as the rich, including kings and queens, elite and the ordinary, the uneducated as well as the highly educated, all keeping themselves of curing themselves for a healthy, extended life in secrecy of their ways. They are curing themselves from simple to incurable diseases as well as preventative health maintenance. Reconsider the hundreds of testimonials from all over the world. Educate yourself with the findings of this research. Use it. God gave it to us for our own personal use. This, with God's will, could be your great day of education. Your window may have just opened as you read to a long, long self-therapy without cost. Okay, that's Gary Ward, uploaded by Fruit Loop. 
He's talking about drinking your own urine. Yeah, it cures this stuff. You got nanoparticles? Listen to Gary Ward. I'm going to put a link to his um, audiobook below this video. And if you've got symptoms that your doctor can't explain, um, you know, c consider that. We were gifted with the ability to heal ourselves by nature. And so I think now more than any other time in our history, we're going to want to avail ourselves of the knowledge that the elite have of the curative ability of our own blood serum that is eliminated from our body through urine, which is sterile. Articles that you find that say, oh, guess what, urine's not sterile, are referring to the fact that your urine may touch parts of your body that aren't sterile on its way out. That's why some people catch their urine in midstream and drink that. But it really doesn't matter, in my opinion. So you want strong bones, healthy teeth, and, and uh, silky smooth running operating joints? Try urine therapy. Um, okay, I want to repeat. We're meeting at Lake Norman, May 29th, 6 o'clock p.m. Make your own overnight arrangements. Folks, if we're being poisoned, since we're being poisoned in our air and in our food and in our water, it is more important ever than ever for the people to get together and talk about how to stop the corporate government from killing us. It's logical, okay? This is something we've got to do. Those of you who are waiting for spacemen to come down and save us, that's not happening. Those of you who have been listening to Zap and, and Fulford and all these people saying that we're going to magically get saved by uh, some, you know, E.T. coming from the sky. That can't happen. It, that can't happen. It, it's, it's against the galactic laws that I know of, and it's against the law of the land that I know of. It's a violation because we are consenting to this stuff. If we're not stopping it, silence is the same as consent. So, so some foreign element isn't going to come to Earth and violate our free will. People who are ignorant of these things are ignorant by choice at this point. And it's their choice. But there are enough of us here who don't happen to choose that. And so it's our job to get our way. We want life. We want to live. We want to live in harmony with nature. We don't agree with Agenda 21 or the whole Codex Alimentarius. We don't agree with Monsanto. We disagree. We disagree and we don't consent. We need to voice our non-consent. We need to stop the United States Congress. and We need to stop Barack Obama. You know, I, somebody wrote to me yesterday and, and said they had you know, some Facebook group that just loved Barack Obama and was convinced that he was going to save us. And uh, I looked into the information, and it appears that some people believe he is some kind of ascended master who is operating behind the scenes in some great plan. Well, you know what? He needs to do it with our knowledge. That's not okay. We need to consent. It's not okay to be bombarded with nanoparticles. The President of the United States, the corporate president, is the commander-in-chief of the corporate military of DARPA. He's supposed to have a measure of control over this. Well, we understand that he doesn't. We understand that DARPA is being controlled by elements above him in this crazy hierarchy that they've got going. That's a problem. The problem is the people don't know that, and so he needs to make that known. Okay, that's enough for right now. And uh, I may be back later, I don't know. But thank you for listening. Bye-bye now.